So Joe, we've got a nice piece of technology in front of us mm. and we're going to have a look at this today, but what are we looking at? Well I knew it was going to be a technical video today guys because you're wearing your glasses so it's going to be something clever. What we've got here, we've been lent this by Rolex, one of the major manufacturers of outdoor electrical equipment and particularly the EV market. Okay. Uh, so this is a Rolex wall pod, Ooh. basically an electric vehicle charging point. Okay, and I can see that the actual cable is actually connected to the pod itself. Yep. So we will unravel this and connect it to the car. Yeah. We're going to open this up, aren't we, as people that have never installed one of these? Have you ever installed mm -hmm. one? No, I've never, never even taken the lid off one Ooh, of these. So okay. I'm really interested to see, just from a newbie's point of view, what's inside here. Yeah, and it's quite weighty. Mm -hmm. We do know, however, there's some technology where the unit is actually talking to the car yep. uh, before the charging process actually yep. starts. Yep. We've got a fancy plug. Socket? <laughs> Most people would call this a plug. We know technically speaking this is a socket, but in actual fact all of the technical data refers to this as a charging gun. Ooh. So that's what we've got going on that's there. very fancy. <laughs> Absolutely. And this is the end that basically plugs into your car. Like you said earlier, this is a tethered unit Ooh. because the cable is permanently connected, so no need for a separate cable from this particular unit to the car. Uh, and it's also worth noting that we've got a Type 1 plug on the end of this. Okay. Now, lots of cars use Type 1 connections, not every car. Uh, lots of other cars use Type 2 and there's, there's various different types of connectors. So you may need an adapter to hook it into your car only if you're moving into a property maybe where there's already one of these existing and it doesn't match your okay. electric vehicle. But that's just a minor technical point. So what I think we should do is bring the camera in, yep. take off the cover and have a look at what's going inside this charging Absolutely. unit. Absolutely, let's do it. Okay then, Joe, so before I attempt to take the six screws out holding the front of the unit on so we can inspect the inside, let's discuss some of the features that we've got on the exterior here, Joe. Absolutely. So exterior is really the key word there, isn't it? Because apart from a few instances where these might be in garages, we're largely going to see these being installed outside. And so we've got to think about the ingress of moisture. So what IP rating have we got on the kit here, guys? Yeah, so we've got IP65, the seal around the actual unit itself, plus the seal that's created mm, here. Yeah. When we screw the actual front cover down, we'll get yep. it back to IP65, Joe. Fantastic. So speaking of the cover, if we open that up, what can we see inside there, guys? So we've got a 40 amp, Type C RCBO, mm -hmm. but the rated value of 30 milliamps yep. for additional protection. But the other cute thing is that we've now got to allow for the type of RCD yeah. that we're using. What type are we using, Joe? So here we've got a Type A RCD. If this was a Type AC RCD, then chances are when the electric vehicle was charging, if a fault was to occur, then the RCD might not actually see that if it was an AC type. So the fact it's a Type A means that it should be able to protect against earth faults while the car is charging. I can see there's a small hole here, Joe. What's that all about? So that little hole there, I'm a generous guy. I like to think that I give them my time and I give where I can. However, what I don't want to do is go off on my holiday, maybe if I'm away for a fortnight, come home and find that the entire neighbourhood has been parking their cars on my driveway in turn and charging their electric vehicles up off my electricity. So in order to prevent that from happening, what we've got here is an option where we can get an additional locking device where we can actually lock that cover closed, which means then that nobody can access that and turn it on. Also, you can get separate key switches as well, so you can actually turn the power on and off with the key, which is quite handy. So that's a nice little feature. Talking about switches, is this a switch here? Uh, it looks like a switch. When I first saw it, I thought it was a button. Maybe you press that in order to start the charging process. But in reality, it's just an indicator lamp showing that the charging process is taking place. So then, Joe, this isn't a socket. Most people think when they look at it yeah. first off, it's a socket. So what is actually this used for? So that's very simply just a holder for the charging gun. So this has got inbuilt kind of holders in order to keep the flex nice and tidy and keep this secure. But if that's left hanging and sort of swinging in the breeze, it's going to bounce and clatter against the wall and it might end up damaging that and finishing the lovely surface on the gun there. So what we'd actually do is while we're not charging is just cook that into this little holster here into this holder and that's going to stop it from swinging about in the wind. Okay then Joe, I think I'll take my three this side and I think you can take your three that side. So yeah, I think I'll manage share that. the responsibility. Yeah, good, yeah. <laughs> you do move at a pace, don't you? Mm -hmm. Absolutely flying along there. Okay. Just going to undo mine at a slightly more thoughtful pace there. There we go. Can't quite match you for speed. There we go. Get that one undone. That one undone. And number three. It might be a case where you might have to wiggle these out a little yeah, bit. Yeah, you sometimes stuff. find that, don't you, with these yeah, uh, IP65 rated fittings. Oh no. oh, no, look at that. Oh, lovely. 
So I'll just pull that to one side. Wow. Just there. There is a fair bit more in there than I thought, Gary. Okay then, Joe, deep breath. We're going to try and explain <laughs> what's going on in here. Um, let's just first of all uh, reiterate that we're actually passing AC yep. into the car and the AC is turned in the car into DC in order yep. to charge the battery. So there's no yep. um, there's no rectification going on in here. Is that nope. right, Joe? That's correct. And actually, if you just follow the path of the cables, you can see that because the cables come out at the bottom of the RCD. And at that point, we've got obviously AC electricity. It goes into the top of this device, Gaz, and of course we know what this is, oh, thankfully. Oh, I'll go with that one. I'm going contactor. Well done, nailed it. Thank you. And then at the other side of the contactor, it passes through this device, which we'll get to in a minute, and then goes out to the car. So there's nowhere along that conductor where any rectification is taking place. So it's AC out to the car. So Joe, I identified the very tricky component there of a contactor. Um, what have we got going on just here? We just want to make it really clear at this point that this is not the charging device. The charging device for the car battery is in the car itself. All this is, is a communication device that kind of speaks to the car charger, which is obviously inside the car. And all it's really doing is sending signals backwards and forwards between the car so that we can have an indication here as yep. to how the car's behaving. We're going to talk about that light and what its different outputs means in a moment. And we're also uh, using this just to monitor some elements of the AC current that is flowing to and from the car and just checking that that is okay and is not going to cause any problems uh, further back in the installation. So at its heart, all it really is, is just a communication device for the car charger, which is sitting in the car. Well then, Joe, as you're on a roll and you got that one, I think we should carry <laughs> on. And what's going on just down here, Joe? You sure you don't want to explain this bit? I don't uh, mind. I think, no, I think I'll throw you a bone. You can have okay. a go. All right, I appreciate that. You're welcome. So, one of the interesting things when we first took this out of the box off camera, we looked at this RCD, Gaz, and what did we immediately go, oh, that wasn't quite what we were expecting? We were straining our eyes to check the symbol because we thought it was going to be a B-type RCD. All yeah. our feelings were, it's going to be B, it's going to be B, yeah. and it's an A-type RCD. Absolutely, because the problem with car charging is that it can inject some DC current back into the AC supply, which can affect the way that RCDs operate. Yeah. Uh, the way to overcome that is to use a type B RCD. It is. In fact, I can read a regulation that verifies that. We'll read this in two parts because there's, there's two interesting parts to this. So regulation 722.531.2.101 starts off by saying, except for circuits using the protective measure of electrical separation, so that would be like an isolating transformer, which we're not using here. Yeah. Each charging point shall be protected by its own RCD of at least type A, which we've got, having a rated residual current of not exceeding 30 milliamps. Which again, which is what we've got. Which is what we've got. It then goes on to say, each charging point incorporating a socket outlet or vehicle connector, complying with the BSEN 62196 series, protective measures against DC fault current shall be taken, except where provided by the EV charging equipment, it says the appropriate measures for each connection point shall be as follows. And then it says RCD type B. Oh, that's what we like. That's what we like, and that's what we were expecting to see in here. However, the regulation carries on. It says, or RCD type A and appropriate equipment that provides disconnection of the supply in case of DC fault current above six milliamps. So the problem occurs if the electric vehicle pushes more than six milliamps back into the AC supply, a type A RCD will not be able to operate when an earth fault occurs. That's true, yes. As the same for a type AC also. The type A is better than an AC, but not quite as good as perhaps we'd need it to be. However, the second part of that where it speaks about appropriate equipment that provides disconnection of the supply in case of DC fault current above six milliamps, this is that piece of equipment. Okay. So we've actually got both parts of that second option. We've got the type A RCD, that's gonna provide us earth fault protection, additional protection. So if the lead becomes damaged and one of the conductors becomes exposed and someone grabs hold of that, if they get a shock of more than 30 milliamps, the RCD is going to trip and potentially save that person's life. However, if a fault occurs in the vehicle with the charging unit, then that vehicle can then start dumping more than six milliamps DC back into the AC system, okay. rendering that useless. So then someone could get a fatal shock. Yeah. 
from a damaged uh, a damaged lead or something Which is like that. Unacceptable. Absolutely. But if you follow the path of these conductors here, it passes through this DC residual current monitoring module, yeah. and this device is basically watching all the time to see if the DC current coming back into this AC supply goes above six milliamps. Okay. If that happens, if the DC current coming back into the supply goes above six milliamps, this device will then disconnect the contactor, meaning that the vehicle won't charge until that fault has been rectified. That's fantastically put. Thank you, Joe. And we can now clearly see, can't we, where the money is being spent in this device. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, initially, when I first saw these being mounted on people's walls, I kind of thought they were sort of a very fancy, quite expensive socket outlet. But actually, there's an awful lot of intelligent equipment in here. And really the key point, some really, really important safety equipment as well. So let's just pick out another less technical feature. We can see the rubber seal is going around the actual rim of the actual uh, case against the front cover in order that that IP65 rating is maintained. And if we just pop it back on, we'll be able to look and talk about maybe the colours that this can change as well, Joe. Yeah, absolutely. So we've got the different effects that are going to come on uh, on this little indicator lamp. So I guess the light could be flashing blue. So what would that mean? That means it's ready for charging. Okay, fantastic. And if that blue light is fixed, if it's not flashing on and off, what does that mean? It means the cable is actually plugged in, but it's not charging. Right. And if we've got a fixed green light? The charging process is underway. We're actually charging. Okay, so if we've got the car plugged in and we see a green light, that means it's charging. That yep. makes sense, yep. And then we might have a flashing red light. So what does that mean? It indicates a fault. Uh, if you switch the unit source off and back on after 20 seconds, this could clear the fault. If it's persistent, you need to contact the installer. Fantastic. So then, Joe, I think not only have we learned something there, mm. we've been properly impressed with this Rolex charger. Do you agree? Absolutely. I thought this was a fairly basic bit of kit. I thought it was a, just a glorified plug and socket system, yeah. really. But actually, there's so much more going on inside this bit of kit, as we saw. And it makes me really confident that these really are providing the, the level of protection that is required for charging electric vehicles. Yeah, and it's a 7.2 kilowatt. Yep. It's a mode three. Mm -hmm. And just remind me, because I like to hear you say it, what it type is, of plug or a, socket have we got on the end? <laughs> it's neither a plug nor a socket. <laughs> it's a type one charging gun. Okay. That's what we've got there. Another key feature that I like, I love the color. I love the green and white contrast. Yeah, yeah. Is there any other colors it comes in, Joe? It actually comes in a range of colors, uh, which I was really surprised by. Actually, I thought this would just be a standardized color, but it is literally available in a wide variety of colours so if you want something that's going to perhaps match in with the outside of your uh, house a little bit more or your business place yeah. then you know that's readily available. Okay then Joe. So we'll say see, see you on your next, next e -fix. E -fix.